Today we're going to introduce some background info for Homer's The Odyssey. Now when it comes to the gods and religious customs, the Greeks believed completely in the existence of their gods and goddesses. They, they practiced polytheism. They believed that gods took an active interest in human life and the gods themselves would behave in human ways. They possessed human characteristics. They could get jealous and envious. They could side in favor with certain people. Maybe they'd become angry. Maybe they were pleased. Now, respect for the gods was essential for your success and survival on Earth. Now, Greek culture was also known for their hero worship. Now, the hero might be the town's founder, perhaps an historical figure who played a major role in an important battle. So the Greeks, however, other than heroes and gods, they also believed in monsters and in mythical creatures. And so you're going to see a lot like the Siren and Scylla and Charybdis and the Cyclops showing up in a lot of their stories and epic poems. Well, what does epic mean? Well, an epic is a long narrative poem about a national or a legendary hero. Now, ancient Greece produced two epics, and they're by a man by the name of Homer, and they were known as the Iliad and the Odyssey, produced somewhere around 900 to 700 BC. Now, Homer himself was blind, and there's no official information found regarding his birth date or birthplace, so there's not much we know about this particular author. But what we start off with when we look at the Iliad and the Odyssey is the history. And the first piece of history you need to know about is the Trojan War. Now this happened around 1200 BC. Mostly we look at the sense of the Iliad and the Trojan War as a legend. Now the war began after Paris, the Prince of Troy, kidnapped Helen, who was considered the most beautiful woman in the world, from her husband Menelaus, who was the king of Sparta. Well, Menelaus built an army to get his wife back and to restore his pride, so Sparta and Troy go to war, and Odysseus was a soldier in Menelaus' army. Well, who was Odysseus? He was the king of Ithaca, and the Greeks battled the Trojans for 10 years but had little success until Odysseus thought of a plan to trick the Trojans into thinking that the Greeks had forfeited, that they had just gone home, and he created what's known as the Trojan Horse. Now, this actually gave the Greeks access to the city. They had left it as a gift for their god, and so the, Tro the, Troys, uh, the Trojans actually bring in the horse, the Trojan horse, into their city walls. And so once at night, everybody is done celebrating their wins, the army that was hiding inside the Trojan horse came out and slaughtered and basically defeated the Trojans. So what kind of values do we usually see in our epic heroes such as Odysseus? Well, first of all, the idea of intelligence. We just see that the war was going on for 10 years and there was a stalemate until Odysseus comes up with an idea about how to get the army into the city walls of Troy. They also have a sense of glory, which could be an equivalence to fame. Um, a lot of times they'll have been in glorious battles, there'll be war stories, or maybe perhaps the souls that achieved glory during life were now given privileges after their, uh, after their death in Hades. You will also see them having helping others by using hospitality. A lot of times because they have the ability to do so, they will offer food, shelter, and protection to travelers without question. They're hospitable even when they didn't want to be. Maybe perhaps out of fear of the gods. Maybe it's nicer and they're doing it out of brotherly duty. You're also going to see the Greek value of loyalty in your hero. A lot of loyalty towards your family, towards your community that you came from, and of course loyalty to a specific god or gods. And then lastly, of course, they're a hero. They better be brave because they're about to come up against something that would probably strike fear in most of us. So now let's look at the Odyssey. In the Odyssey, Homer starts by telling about the last days of the Trojan War, and the man responsible for the fall of Troy is Odysseus. He's the one who created the Trojan horse. Now, because Odysseus was instrumental in Troy's destruction, he angered the gods who were sympathetic to Troy, and now the gods will vow that he has a long and difficult journey home.
So as we go through the Odyssey, Odysseus and his men encounter many dangers which make the return to Ithaca difficult. Again, we mentioned a bunch of monsters from the beginning, the Scylla and Charybdis, uh, the Cyclops, uh, the Sirens, and we're also going to notice there are several women who also try to keep him from his wife. You're going to be meeting with the Sea Witch, you're going to be meeting with uh, the, the uh, other witches as well. Um, people are going to try and stop Odysseus no matter how in any way, shape, or form they need to stop him from getting home. Yet somehow Odysseus always finds a way to get out of his difficult situations. Odysseus is most known for his quick thinking and intelligence. He's a clever guy. And then of course being you know, in battle for 10 years and the king that he is, his epic hero sense of bravery is always paramount. So now let's look at some of the literary terms that you'll be seeing in the Odyssey. So what does it mean if something is epic? And I know a lot of times students will see the idea of epic and just put it together with the word epic fail because that's what they've seen on social media. Or maybe they will actually look at the idea of, whoa, that's epic. Well, you're not too far off. However, an epic is more of a narrative than anything else. So what is an epic poem? It's a lengthy narrative poem that usually contains the heroic deeds and events significant to a particular culture or society. Now, it might have failures and it might have glories in it. It's probably going to have both. But what epic means is a lengthy story told in poetic form, a narrative poem. And your examples are the Iliad and the Odysseys. So when we take a look at the characteristics of epic poetry, usually it's beginning in medius res, in the middle of things, uh, and it usually has a little bit of a flashback. Say, for example, when you get to the Odyssey and we see Odysseus sitting down at the very beginning of the poem with King Alcinous, and King Alcinous says, are you Odysseus? Where have you been? We have a flashback through the rest of book one as Odysseus tells us every place he's been and all of the trials and tribulations he's been through. So we're in medius res. You're going to have a vast setting, uh, especially since usually your epic uh, hero is on some sort of journey or quest, just like Odysseus, how, how he's trying to get back from Troy over to Ithaca. He's going to be going through from one nation to the next to the next. Usually it features lengthy and formal speeches. Uh, a lot of times you're going to have uh, introduction. Uh, you're going to have two people being introduced to one another. So as we learn from Odysseus who this new person or monster is, there's usually a lot of formal speeches in order to give us the narration. It should contain divine interventions. Say, for example, Athena is always trying to help Odysseus, and Poseidon, who's upset by the Trojan horse, he's going to try and stop Odysseus from coming home. So you're going to see divine interventions, mostly in epi epic poetry. It features heroes that embody the values and morals of the civilization. In order for it to have stayed around this long, instead of Homer just writing a someday poem, we need to see values and morals in our heroes that we still embody today. And then, of course, the protagonist usually descends into some sort of underworld or hell. There has to be some critical tragic flaw. There has to be some low point in the story in order for your epic uh, hero to come back into more glory. All right, well, what is an epic hero? Well, it's a protagonist of an epic poem. They have to be brave. Almost always they have noble background, whether or not they are divine, such as Hercules, or they come from nobility, like the king of Ithaca himself, Odysseus. They're usually admired for their great achievements. After all, we have all the different trials that Hercules has gone through. Uh, Odysseus has not only helped defeat Troy, but he's going to have lots of places in the Odyssey where he's defeating other monsters. They're usually affected by great events. And so when we take a look at Odysseus and Hercules, they have all of these trials and tribulations in order to become who they are. They're not just the normal, everyday, run-of-the-mill human being. Usually they have some sort of superhuman qualities. <clears throat> Usually that means for strength, or maybe perhaps they're a little bit braver than others, but they still have to have a flaw or weakness. Say, for example, for Hercules and for Odysseus, mostly it's pride, where they have a tendency to want people to know who they are and what kind of uh, joys and, and glories that they have earned. 
They must conquer many difficult tasks and they're on a quest for something of great value to either them or to their people. Now, of course, Odysseus is trying to get home, uh, but his quest is basically also to overcome the gods, to make the gods realize that humans can actually uh, be in control of who wins and loses in a battle. Usually there are villains to try to keep the hero from his quest. Again, from the Odyssey, you're going to be seeing witches and other supernatural powers, and you are going to see some gods who are trying to keep the hero from his quest. And he knows that the gods come first, and then the heroes come. They do still have to submit that the gods are always first. And a lot of times it, it kind of helps if they're attractive. So when we look at the step in an epic hero's journey, usually there has to be that call to an adventure or a quest. And usually it's some sort of duty. Uh, so we, you see them leaving home for a long period of time, and most of what the hero's journey is an actual physical journey. Usually it is to either go and, and get something, to possess something that heroes people want, or they are on their way home from that action. And the hero must depend upon his intelligence and his wit. Uh, a lot of times when we look at the epic hero's journey, there's a lot of cleverness that has to happen in order for us to overcome obstacles. Now, the journey leads to a transformation or self-realization. Sooner or later, that hero is going to realize their flaws. And the hero is going to regain their rightful place in society at the end. It may not necessarily be what you would call a, quote, happy ending, but they are going to take their place in society where they belong after this journey, after having the change or the self-realization that they've had. And so here is a bigger picture of the hero's journey. Lastly, one of the things you should know about epic poems was that they were done in oral tradition. Now, stories that were told and retold verbally from one generation to another, uh, many ancient Greeks were not literate unless the profession required them to be. And so in the way for them to learn things such as the Iliad and the Odyssey is that they would go to places of uh, common aspects, maybe outside the forums. Uh, maybe they would, if they were wealthy enough, actually hire somebody like Homer to come into their uh, estate and give oral tradition. Um, but because most of them were not literate unless their profession required them to be, the only way that you would hear a story like, say, the Iliad or the Odyssey or Hercules' trials, you would be looking for somebody like Homer who knew the story and could tell it to you orally. Now, most women didn't have jobs back then, so most of them were illiterate, so the only way they would hear these stories is through an oral interpreter. And men who partook in business professions such as trading and selling goods they were literate along with the wealthy gentlemen of the society. But otherwise, if you were not a businessman or if you were not a nobleman or somebody who was working for the Senate, you were illiterate. So you needed to have your stories told, you, told to you through oral tradition. All right, well, there's your vocab words. And there's a lot about the idea of epic poetry, specifically for the introduction of Homer's Iliad and the Odyssey. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel, guys. If you would like to hear more about the Iliad and the Odyssey or more about Greek uh, and Roman literature, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to hear. And if you liked what you heard, give me a like. And it would be appreciated if you guys subscribe to my channel. Thanks for stopping by.